Hello, Prairie View students, families, staff, and visitors. Uh, did you guess where I was yesterday? I was in Mrs. McGough's room. Today I'm in somebody else's room. We're reading The Snow Treasure by Marie McSwiggin, and we're on chapter 17. I hope you're enjoying the book like I am. A new disease found its way into Riswick. It attacked only the smallest children, the ones who had not yet started to school. They were covered with red spots from head to foot. But the disease differed from the better known rashes like diphtheria and scarlet fever. The patient had no high temperature. His appetite could be just as good as before the rash. Indeed, Dr. Aker did not insist that the children stop eating. He only said they must stay indoors while covered with the red spots. What is this new disease? The people asked each other. Dr. Aker told them a name of many syllables. They could never remember it, so they called it the plague. German measles was Peter's name for it, with reason. He had been in Dr. Aker's study when he packed his bag before going to visit Bunny, the first of his patients. Peter had seen him put in a bottle of red disinfectant that he used for cuts and bruises. Cotton on the end of a toothpick made a good paintbrush. Bunny Lindstrom had as thick a coat of spots as the leopard of his Noah's Ark. Bunny was told he was quarantined. He had no idea what that meant until his mother explained that Peter and Lavicia would go live at Helga Thompson's house while Bunny had, had these spots. So quarantine meant Peter and Lavicia had to go away from home, he decided. The three-year-old doll twins were sick too, and Old's two-year-old son, little Old. But as none of these had big brothers or sisters, Peter and Lavicia had distinction of being the only ones turned out of their homes while the disease raged. School? Well, school was out of the question during an epidemic. Dr. Aker went to the commandant to explain why his order could not be carried out. Some of the children, he told, were dangerously ill. It might be hate fatal for the whole town, for the Germans themselves, if the disease was not checked at once. To open the school would be a sure way to spread it. On his return from the beach, Dr. Aker found Mrs. Lindstrom and Peter waiting in his office for the news of his interview with the commandant and of how the doctor found himself trapped by making his plague so unusual. How long will the, this disease last? The commandant asked, but I could not tell. It's a new thing. With us, I said, a disease I've never treated before. It could run nine days like measles or 30 days like scarlet fever. But we're taking every precaution. We're isolating and disinfecting. When I said it could spread to the troops on the beach, I thought he looked white. He sent for the German army doctor, a civil enough fellow named Metzger. This Metzger began asking me a long list of questions. Were the tongues coated? Were there un were there undue perspiration? Was there high fever? He seemed surprised with my answers and none too well satisfied. Then he nearly had me with when he proposed something I had not thought of about at all. I take a look at one of your cases, doctor. I go back with you and when you go, he said to me. Well, he had me there. Dr. Aker went on. It was, it was the last thing I expected. It hadn't occurred to me that an army doctor would be called in for civilian illness, and if so, that he would insist on seeing for himself. One look by him and the epidemic would be over. Those spots might deceive an ordinary person, but they're never fool a doctor. Yes, and that would arouse suspicion, Mrs. Lundstrom said. Maybe they don't suspect us of anything yet, but if they learn we have a reason for keeping the school closed, they'll begin to ask what it is and possibly find out. Peter was wide, was open-eyed as the doctor went on with his story. Well, I had to think fast, he said. I couldn't behave, behave if I didn't want him for that. Would surely make them inquire why he couldn't see one of the patients. 
So I said, there's nothing I would like better, doctor. I'm distressed at how quickly this sickness spreads. I'd appreciate another opinion, for it seems to travel like wildfire. I am not sure, but what it could spread to your whole camp here. I thought the commandant drew away from me when I started to tell of the disease. He acted as if he could give it to him just by being there. But now I saw him sort of jump. Doc Dr. Metzger didn't seem afraid. If it's as fast a thing as that, I would indeed like to see one of your cases, he said. The commandant, however, had a different idea. My words about how it traveled to the whole camp had struck home. He made a sign to the doctor. They went into the little room nearby. I could hear him, only a buzz of talk, and now and again, some words I could understand. Dr. Metzger was trying to win his permission to visit Riswick and see how the, the new rash for himself, but the other was firm. Our men were up there yesterday, I overheard the commandant say. You'll ha have all you can do to see they don't come down with this disease, he said. Some other things I didn't hear, but I caught some words to the effect that they were living in a heathenish, outlandish place where a blizzard could bl blow up out of a calm and that the diseases were probably as freakish and unexpected as the weather. The best course for them to follow was to have a little as possible to do with the people. When they came back to me, the doctor spoke. So there's the commandant. It, it will not be necessary for me to see any of your patients. Come, he said, continue with the treatment you've begun and keep a careful quarantine. Then he gave me a long list of orders about sanitation and burning waste and so on. When he finished, the commandant said, Remember, if this disease spreads to our army, you will be held accountable. I, I could give him my word that none of his soldiers would take the disease. Mrs. Lindstrom and Peter had to laugh. Nothing but the red disinfectant and cotton-tipped toothpicks could spread Bunny's strange disease. He waved his hand at me to tell me I was dismissed, Dr. Aker went on. I've taken the liberty of closing the school, I told him. I've also ordered all the healthy children to stay outdoors whenever possible. There's nothing like fresh air to check an epidemic, I said. So the children's task could go on in spite of all that had happened to prevent it. Bunny recovered, and Lavissi and Peter were allowed to go back to their home. So it was a short-lived disease, the found town folks decided, like three-day measles. But there were enough new cases to keep the school closed. So the gold kept spilling down the mountain. Thousands and thousands of kroners of bullion every day. Two teams would go out one morning and two teams the following day. On every sled there was more gold than any of the children had ever seen before. One day, Helga's team got the start on Peter's. When he reached the snake, her team was already there. She seemed buried in her thought, her own thoughts. When Peter approached, she hardly answered his wave of greeting. When he began unloading his sled, she came over beside him and dropped on her knees in the snow. Peter, she whispered, I'm frightened. I heard something. Heard something? What? Listen, she warned, still in whispers. There it is again. It's even louder than over by my snowman. I don't hear anything. Look, something moved in the bushes. She pointed to the far side of the field. They ran in the direction she pointed. They pushed through the snow-hung branches, but were stopped by the black water at their feet. They were unable to cross the angry, rushing stream to the far side where the snow made a thick screen over the heavy shrubbery. If we could if we could only get over, we could see the prince in the snow. Are we being watched? Peter asked. I don't know. For the last week I felt eyes on me. Every time I turned around. That's the end, 
It's kind of interesting that in this book, they have a plague or an epidemic, kind of like our times right now. Have a great day. Enjoy the story.